Radio Chili Effect is sponsored by WallStreetWindow.com and listeners like you. And now, and now the, most, the most underrated voice in all, in all media, Chuck O'Chelly. February 9, 2024, allegedly, according to that thing we call a calendar. This is the Ocelli Effect. So I am going live early, and I was supposed to get to it about nine minutes ago here just after 7 p.m. Eastern, but turns out I had to take a little extra time to get things rolling. Looks like we're broadcasting live and loud. Hopefully everything is good. I had to do a couple of quick resets and restarts just before going to air, but I've got a lot to cover in this one hour, so I'm not going to spend time trying to sort it all out. Anyway, later on, on uh, on our regularly scheduled time at 8 p.m. Eastern, we'll switch things over and I'll get my co-host B. Pete with me. We'll get into the live open mic and maybe cover a whole lot of news that I meant to get to earlier in this hour. But we shall see what we shall see. Anyway, where should we begin at this point, right? Let's start with the beginning uh, of, of what it was was predicted a couple of weeks back on the Friday night open mic. Uh, it does indeed appear that uh, we are at the fabulous start to the year of the lawsuit. <laughs> uh, could, could, could it be the year of some kind of rat on the Chinese astrological chart of order in the stars? Is, is that system that we are indeed, uh, you know, looking at? Is it the year of some kind of rat? Cause you know, they, they have various species of rat. It's not just the year of the rat. No, it is the year of the dragon. Not sure which breed of dragon, but I'm sure you could check online somewhere. Ask Google or ask Siri or whatever. And they'll fill you in. Anyway, why wouldn't it be the year of the rat if it is the year of the lawsuit? After all, that particular plague of vermin, uh, you know, it, it could be a specific species of rat because there's more than one. But, uh, you know, it's almost insulting to the disease-ridden rodents to compare them to lawyers, attorneys, etc., isn't it? The punishing infestation of these creatures called attorneys into what could have been a lawful system is most fascinating. But is this going to be the thing, the driver, the handle on society that is used to steer it? It's a lot more effective, actually, in keeping your attention, keeping you busy and keeping legitimate things like, I don't know, sources of revenue, people's time management, all of that good stuff can all be kept busy, tied up, minimized and neutralized just with the legal system and the constant array of lawsuits. So let's get into it with just some headlines, and I'm going to go through a lot of different websites and all that good stuff, try and give you a whole bunch of uh, interesting information if you go over to the live chat at Ocelli.com, and uh, we'll get into a few things that I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste and see if it'll let me drop it in at the website at Ocelli.com so you can read along or check it out later. Um, I'll also include all of this stuff, the links to the relevant articles, etc., in the chat at Ocelli.com, but in the show notes, along with other things, because we're going to break this into a separate podcast. Anyway, how about this? The remainder of Alex Murdaugh's money. Remember that? The, uh, the, the, the South Carolina murder trial, the rich guy, the lawyer who said that through his Oxycontin habit, he uh, decided to scam people and run all sorts of, oh, you know, Little schemes, by the way, a lawyer, of course, um, out there, you know, having families sue him and then collecting all the money and not turning it over to the people who were allegedly injured and the aggrieved parties in various lawsuits. Later on, they claim that he shot and killed his son and his wife. When one of those schemes went wrong or something, I don't know, I kind of missed the thread after a while. Very popular, had people glued not to the level that OJ had people glued to TVs, but definitely had people glued to their stupid rectangles for many months watching the Alex Murdaugh scandal unfold. He was talking about Paul Paul, which was his son Paul, and his other son, good God, what was his name? Buford? I don't know. Bud? Buck? Bubba? No, wait, Bubba was the dog. Anyway, a lot of stuff going on with the Southern family there. 
But, uh, you know, and, and by the way, plenty of contro- controversy, controversy for those of you on the other side of the uh, pond. Because <laughs> um, what's going on now? Looks like uh, money that could have been divided up and handed to some of the aggrieved parties that he scammed out of money and all that is not going to them. So that continues to be an issue. Not only that, but a court reporter uh, was allegedly, you know, kind of involved in steering the jurors a bit. That's kind of a no-no, something that should not have gone down in the, uh, you know, American legal system, uh, the American unlawful system, whatever it is you want to call it at this point in time. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I, we could get into all this kind of good stuff, and we are going to get into it, but there's a lot of things in the world of lawsuit that we need to cover, so let's not linger too much longer there. And again, keep... Uh, Keep up with all this stuff at the Ocelli.com chat room. The ACLU is threatening to sue the state uh, if a bail bill is signed into law by Governor Kemp. So we're going to go with some Georgia stuff in the year of the lawsuit. Yeah, that's happening because people are arguing over how fair it is to have bail. People get aggravated over the bail concept altogether um, on both sides of the issue. And a lot of people seem to be completely blind to the other side. You know, there's plenty of people that complain. That with a little bit of cash, you can get out of jail, and that's true. Maybe not everybody should be able to get out of jail just with a bit of cash, even while they're awaiting trial, this and that, because they're too much of a danger to the community, themselves, etc., blah, blah. So some people say there should be no bail whatsoever. Other people recognize that as per the way the rest of the system works, it's mainly loaded against, guess who, mainly the me and you that is out there, the majority of poor people, etc., those that can't afford to hire the good lawyer to make the negotiation work, those that can't afford to pay for the result that they want to get in the pay-to-play system. But uh, that's going on. So the ACLU is getting involved there, although the American Civil Liberties Union seems to be not so involved in much. I mean, union maybe, but civil things not so much, except civil suits. Uh, You know, liberty, not something they're interested in at all. And America, there's plenty of people that, you know, are anti, uh, well, what should we call them? anti-liberals that would say, oh, they've never been interested in America, and other people that recognize them as, at the very least, a bastion of free speech in the uh, legal but not so lawful system that is supposed to be the injustice, excuse me, justice system, but you really should look up the ancient goddess justice to find out what the true nature of it is. Anyway, I digress. Point should be made here. ACLU, not exactly the animal it once was, doesn't behave as it once did, not really looking for free speech, even in the days of, you know, the great famous Skokie case and when they were handling the uh, the whole Nazi issue and does the Klan get to march even though people don't want it in their town because they have the right to free speech, you know, the ACLU defended them just as much as they defended all those commies and all those liberal sissies out there, et cetera, et cetera. They defended the Klan and the hardest of the hard right wing as well. Nowadays, I defy you to tell me what the agenda is. <laughs> and they're not even the open-ended sort of will swim both ways like a shark in the distance, no matter where the blood is in the water. That's where we're going to go. You can't even make a consistent idea. Uh, you can't make a consistent argument for their psychology there, their alleged, well, ethos regarding this. You can't get there. ACLU is not what it once was, no matter what side of the issue you stand on. Anyway, they're threatening to get involved in that suit if Kemp passes the law. But there's also this case of the descendants of a Texas slave and Texas uh, slave owner, <laughs> Okay, why do I say this? Well, the the survivors of a formerly enslaved woman is seeking to claim land supposedly left to her 150 years ago. And there's problems with that in Jacksonville, Texas. And I have other stories from another Jacksonville coming up later if I get there. Anyway, so there's that happening in the year of the lawsuit. Also, a man smoking incesticides quote, savagely attacked, end quote, killed a cellmate at a Macon State prison. And the family is now suing over that. Because after all, I mean, you know, even though you are supposed to suffer harshly and people will 
They used to, you know, complain about the fact that people in prison had cable TV, right? Wasn't that the big complaint? They have cable TV and better food than I do. Hmm. Well, if you think the better food argument still stands, you should really go check it out. I mean, unless you're the, uh, you know, the QA non shaman and you needed a special diet, you might get it. And the, you know, certain club feds and things like that and white collar prisons, sure, you get fed real well. But most of the time, even if you do get TV, <laughs> Uh, the rest of the conditions in prison, not quite as pleasant as some people want to make it out to be when they want to complain about how too, too light and lenient and loving is our prison system. On the other hand, uh, the people that think that, you know, you should have all of your rights intact when you sort of surrendered some of those by committing a crime, I have a problem with them as well. Look, humane treatment is possible. It should be the, well, difficult to attain, but always aspire to goal when it comes to crime and punishment. Here's a fact, and, you know, if we wanted to boil it all the way down to its most intense, ethical, truly spiritual correctness, then the truth is that if you have a truly mature species, we do not require prisons. You either rehabilitate people truly, or you place them outside of society completely, not by storing them and monetizing them and putting them into slave labor situations, but they either exit society permanently or they are reintegrated back in and made useful by actual techniques that do that. And you don't need long-term prisons. You need jails, temporary cooling off periods, short term, this kind of thing. But long prison sentences are the absolute failure of the spiritual end of any legal system, of any philosophical belief system. Prison is not needed. Death penalty expanded if you have a system that could be trusted to <laughs> enforce it and execute it, pardon the pun, properly. You would not require prisons. You would just have either the dead or those that we have now corrected one way or another. And I don't mean re-education like communists. I mean, you either correct people or they got to go. If they're going to continue to be a constant danger, they got to go. Too bad we don't have a system that is not entirely corrupt, hijacked, and only there for the pay-to-play, regardless of the spiritual, ethical, or realistic uh, uh, outcomes of any of it. Drug crimes still a problem as opposed to a medical issue. Psychological issues being treated all the wrong way because, first of all, they're treating psychology with the reckless abandon of the psychosomatic industry. They're handling it like as if those people that were psychics could really truly predict the future. There are some people that do it, but they are few and far between. And Psy being the spiritual end of it, this is the problem that nobody addresses. Sure, they can medicate you and do it for profit and figure out a way to call it health care, but it ain't healthy for anybody. Back to it, if you have a way to correct people, to actually make them functional once again and not dangerous, you put them back into society, you make restitution, and you're done. That's the way a morally mature, you know, uh, organism would handle these things. And quite frankly, if you remove poverty, desperation, scarcity, if you remove those things from the equation, if you make it so that people are not in a position of always having to accept the reinforced concept that their life really doesn't have much meaning, they might, if removed from that situation, stop believing that other people's lives, property, etc., are unimportant and just as disposable as their own. Longer, longer discussion. Not for today. Back to the headlines. A couple of things also going on in the wonderful world of lawsuits. Again, in the year of the lawsuit, a judge criticizing Trump's uh, mid-trial mistrial request in the E. Jean Carroll defamation case. Now, if you really pay attention and you keep score at home, you're going to find that there's plenty of ways that all these things are going to get dismissed, put aside, made illegitimate, rendered foolish. And quite frankly, the kinds of things that somebody, if they were really attempting 
to nail somebody would not bother with. They'd go after the real things as opposed to trumping up stuff that will be easily defeated in the corrupt system. Oh, but we don't need to descend into that discussion once again about how this is just political theater played out for you to have your sentimentality attached to it. You hate Trump? Good. They're going after him. They're going to get him. They're going to get him. He's going to get nailed. He's a felon. Except he never gets convicted. Except he's never actually made to act- to, 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 to be held accountable. Ever. <laughs> Wrong or right? Never accountable. Guaranteed. What does that look like? A guy in a privileged position. Not about white privilege. Not, not even necessarily about the privilege of richness. But the privilege of what? The rules do not apply to you. Never have for Trump. Why would it change now? <laughs> and he's useful still. He might be able to occupy that office once again of the president. And I'm predicting he will. We'll get into election news in a second. But uh, what else did I have here? Oh, yeah, I was going to go back over that Texas uh, slave owner thing again. But I think I've already talked about that. And do we need to discuss it some more? Is there plenty of call out there for huh, what, what were they calling that again? The restitution, the grand restitution. What is that? Oh, yeah. Reparations. That's the phrase. Is there a need for it? Is there a call for it on a spiritual level? Yeah, probably. But can you actually address the fact that a serious number of people have been hindered one way or another over time and generationally it's been passed down so that any inheritance you might have garnered at any point in time, even if you were born yesterday, you're on an unfair footing. And that unfair footing, even though it has been improved over time, has not been made level so that everybody has a fair shake. Welcome to planet Earth. You never hear with a fair shake and equal when it comes to the monetary system, when it comes to the caste systems uh, across the planet, no matter what language you speak, how they're laid out, how they're supposedly denied, how everyone is suppo- is allegedly equal under the law and all that, kind of irrelevant when you take a look at the reality. On a spiritual level, you are just as important, valuable, or as tiny and much of a speck of sand in the hourglass of time and space as I am, as anyone is. But is that the reality in which we live? No, and it is not the reality we enjoy or don't enjoy here on planet Earth. So do I have more stuff from the year of the lawsuit? Sure, I do. And we're going to drop that into the Ocelli chat room moving forward. What's next? Let's stick around Georgia a little bit. The death of a Georgia baby decapitated during <laughs> during delivery was ruled a homicide. You know lawsuits are coming from that. So that's coming up. And indeed, a baby that, that had a tough delivery, the doctor literally ripped this kid's head off trying to get it out of the mother and tried to cover it up. And even when they gave the parents a little bit of time with the baby, they wrapped up a mangled child in a blanket and handed it to them. And they had no idea that the baby had uh, been injured in this way until the funeral home people contacted them. And after a re-examination, the baby's death has now been ruled a homicide. In other Georgia-based news, the good fire days are shrinking in Georgia. What it means for wildfires and smoke pollution, well, you don't think of Georgia when it comes to wildfires and smoke pollution. But if you know my local area, the next headline is something you think of. Brothers behind bars after an armed robbery at the Little Caesars parking lot in Macon, Georgia. Uh, there's a lot of armed robberies happening. Do I think that this is some escalation? Uh, see, blame Biden. List number 87, I think. Um, no, this is just the way of things. And again, the hmm, system, the continuous system of desperation and how it is people react to it and economic deprivation when you are living in a certain place at a certain time and it is deemed that it doesn't really matter uh, what happens to you, what happens to your life. And again, if you don't see any value in your own life, why should you ever, ever, ever see value in others and not treat them accordingly so all is disposable? 
all along the way. And that's usually not the best quality of anything when it's in the disposable package. What else? Politicians out Wiccans. If you're not a Christian, this is in quotes, you shouldn't be teaching children. That comes from the wildhunt.org. U.S. states, people are fleeing and the ones they are moving to. You know, every couple of weeks there's a new article that comes out with that on it. But I've got one from Forbes magazine that I found pretty interesting. Why is it happening? Are people only abandoning uh, blue states to move to red states? Is the narrative that simple? What's going on there? Tell you this, no matter what, if you search around long enough, you're going to find an explanation for people moving and not moving, etc., to the various states for all sorts of political concerns. And if you search long enough, you will find the one that fits your preconceived narrative. Just got to search long enough. Hmm. So what else do we have? I found this interesting. You know, the constant barrage about who's a hero, when and where, and all that good stuff. Gotta say, I'm appreciating the game that is being put on, as a constant, uh, by your friend Elon Musk. You know, the guy who controls X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Find it interesting. We go to <clears throat> VigilantNews.com. I think it's a right-wing oriented site. But uh, in a controversial move, this I'm reading from this article, which is titled, Elon Musk Exposes Disney's DEI Enforcement. In a controversial move, tech magazine, uh, tech magnet, excuse me, Elon Musk has taken to Twitter to voice his disapproval of Disney's diversity, equity, and inclusion standards, casting them as, quote, mandatory institutionalized racism and sexism. And quote, Musk's remarks highlight a growing debate over corporate America's embrace of DEI initiatives with his critique suggesting that such efforts, however well-intentioned, may cross into the realm of discrimination themselves. So under ironic, you should uh, seek the word irony and see if it fits in your dictionary back pocket at all. Because isn't this the the pot and the kettle and all that stuff calling each other black as black can be? And oh no, I used the word black. I must be racist. Elon Musk launches his red Tesla Roadster into space six years ago. Where is it now? That article's on theobserver.com. <laughs> um, you know, if you just tune to Twitter, and that's another point there, is ever since you took over Twitter, it's fascinating to see how people can live in diversely different realities. There are individuals that tell me it's a wonderful place now because free speech has returned to Twitter, which makes their world a better place, even though that's not part of the real world. Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, but somehow that has improved their real world. Does it have real world consequences? Sure. But has Elon Musk really done something for you lately? According to some people, he absolutely has. He's made a lot of things a lot better. In fact, the world is a better place because Elon Musk owns Twitter. But they're not necessarily in love with his Tesla, you know, or at least not the goals of the Tesla, because most of them don't give a crap about what it is they're going to do about the environment. Oh, wait a minute. I'm assuming that Tesla is something that's helpful to the environment or electric cars might be. That's a bad and stupid assumption. But either way, tech magnate has made his fortune definitely off of being in privileged positions at privileged times. And quite frankly, he's never done better than when he could spend other people's money and acquire whole new fortunes via what? Government subsidies. But pay no attention to that because he is practically a founding father of the next wave of free speech, right? Along with Tucker Carlson, who recently, by the way, decided to do an interview... Right. Of Vladimir Putin. Another thing that shook the world and made it a better place for you. Right. Putin and Tucker. You know, I had to read about this quite a bit. In fact, starting with uh, the StopWorldControl.com blog, which uh, I do follow and I follow a lot of these. Really, um, it's it's getting strange out there. Um, you know, Substacks. All right. I am following those things lately, and I'm going to drop some more links in the Ocelli chat room just so you can attempt to keep score at home. But I think you're going to lose track on your uh, racing form. All right. Just saying. 
Uh, it, it is interesting to me that this goes on. It is certainly of interest to all of us as these things roll through. Um, but Putin, he's going to save the world, according to uh, StopWorldControl.com. And uh, I got, uh, let's see, it looks like I got Anonymous or somebody uh, really blasted me with a whole bunch of links. This is my Fox News links for the day, I guess, that I get blasted with in the chat room. But um, I'm going to actually strike those so that they are <laughs> more in, uh, you know, I have my stuff up there for now, please. Uh, you can put your stuff in there later. I'm just going to strike those so that I'm not trying to read from yours while I'm reading from my headlines. Let's see. How do we do that? I should be able to strike it with this here. Yes. Okay. There we go. Uh, I think I struck one of my own things as well. Yes, I did. I removed some. I don't want to remove more. I'm trying to get my list in there as I go. So, sorry. I'm having a conversation with one person posting in the chat room. Didn't look at the name. Don't care who it is. I'm playing stuff and doing my thing my way right this minute, and uh, I want my list out there. By all means, post anything you like in a little bit. But for now, okay, I was dealing with the Elon Musk issue and Musk media as it stands. Politicians out Wicca. Yeah, let's get all those in there. And the Elon Musk links I'm going to drop in there next, as well as a link to a free comic book by Greg Palast about Don't Let Them Steal the Election Again. Uh, free comic book download. You guys might want to check that out. And even though uh, it doesn't apply to lawsuits necessarily, um, there's something that made me think of lawsuits when I saw this headline. I'm going to read from it briefly after I drop my links in the chat and let you guys peruse those as well. Huge list of links should be in the show notes, by the by, when I'm all done with this. So let's go to the site, okay? The, uh, the, Cor the Cornell Daily Sun, in fact... And, uh, yeah, let's see, cornellsun.com. That's the correct website. And I found this arts and culture article interesting because it just said a lot to me in the headline, and I wanted to read a little bit from it for you. O.J. Simpson, the Iraq War, and the day satire died. All righty. Henry Kissinger died, and thus a spotlight shone on imperialist absurdity. A Tom Lear quote has reemerged in the American zeitgeist quote political satire became obsolete when Henry Kissinger was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize end quote. Indeed, it is no secret that Kissinger killed millions. It is also no secret that O.J. Simpson very likely killed his wife. <laughs> very likely killed his wife. Yeah, not convicted, but looks that way. Yet Simpson jests in a recent viral TikTok that he is a slayer of women in quotes. Oh, wow. In this way, Simpson reclaims the narrative. Such blatant irony could not could only come from a subject wholly unaffected by his guilt. Any further condemnation of his moral corruption is futile. The comment section is uh, only full of jokes because what is there to gain from saying, hey, you're a murderer, in quotes at this point. I am reminded of the Black Mirror episode, The Waldo Moment, that's in quotes. A struggling actor, Jamie, plays a cartoon character named Waldo who stumbles into popularity by humiliating a conservative politician. The character accrues political clout and runs for office as a populist outsider. Waldo's significance outgrows Jamie's control and becomes a figure of political unrest. Being a cartoon grants him immunity from serious criticism when the public uh, into a greater violent mistrust of career politicians. An unserious candidate has become the most imponent, impotent, wow, impudent, uh, imponent, I-M-P-O-N-E-N-T, wow. To be uh, satirical is to be poignant discerning this is the politics of donald trump his significance like waldo's transcendence his personal agency he is a joke to the media to career politicians and thus he is immensely popular with disillusioned voters against those candidates that lack of self-awareness i.e hillary clinton <laughs> this means that trump cannot afford to act in any rational traditional fashion he must play into the part, making unsavory jokes and disturbing the status quo. Otherwise, 
He loses his political claim, his outsider appeal that relates him to alienated voters. You will occasionally find other outsider wannabes like Andrew Yang, but the moment that Yang unwittingly became the butt of the joke, his campaign devolved to irrelevancy. Now, the funny thing is, is that until he mentioned Andrew Yang and, you know, certain things that would date this thing, con you know, to, to, to current, this is uh, something that should have been written in 2016. It's kind of already far outdated, and it was only published on February 7th of this year. So with that, I'm going to just drop a clip here to uh, deal with Hunter Biden for a moment and see what what is being said regarding the Hunter Biden hearing uh, the House Oversight Committee. I think there was some commentary after the hearing, and I think that's what I have queued up, but let's find out. Sorry, I have to rewind what I have loaded up on the video player here and see if it'll go through. I think I have Jim Jordan. No, Jim Jordan is on the screen, but there is a different... Extravagant spending. All right. You know what? Screw that. Uh, we'll get to the Hunter Biden story just by checking it out. And this, this is a funny part of the story to me, which was published on the 23rd of January. So it is a little outdated, but let's get to it. I think it gives a snapshot to the varying strange degrees. You know, people want to talk about the Chinese deal and the other deals with Hunter and the big guy and all that. Here's another snapshot. Uh, and this article comes from, let's see, CBS News, I guess. Kevin Morris loans to Hunter Biden totaled $6.5 million, $1.6 million more than previous estimate. And again, this is on the 23rd. Now, what's weird is when you get into this whole world of loans and who loans you money and what you do and don't have to pay back, that is usually a nexus that nobody wants to cover in these corruption discussions because... They're all over the place. Banks forgiving loans, other people forgiving loans, and loan repayment. That used to be secret code for something that was generally illegally passing hands one way or another. So there's probably a lot more to this than the superficial look that they're going to give to it. But let's let's examine what they did decide to report. And I didn't see wide coverage on this on the 23rd, did you? Or the various other stuff outside of the House Oversight Committee. And I, I know I have a story on that I'll get to in a minute. But let me stay away from that and really start to pound the headlines momentarily after we take a look at this loan uh, situation. A lawyer for Hollywood attorney uh, Kevin Morris told congressional investigators that Morris loans to Hunter Biden exceeded $6.5 million, an amount roughly $1.6 million higher than described in earlier estimates. Uh, in a January 25 letter to the general counsel of the Republican-led House Oversight Committee obtained by CBS News, Morris' attorney provided new financial information in response to follow-up questions from GOP investigators, stemming from his client's closed-door deposition earlier this month. Morris' attorney confirmed a repayment schedule on the loans beginning in 2025, noting that separate attorneys negotiated an interest rate of 5%. Now, I'm pausing from the article. This is indeed one of the techniques that is used for money passing hands that you do show on the books, but you push it down the road. Yeah, the loan repayments will begin at some point, or you describe something as a loan repayment, when indeed it is not a loan repayment. It is a payment, and you're trying to hide for what purposes that payment is being made. Does anybody think, in all honesty, that Hunter Biden needed to go get $5 million from anybody? He doesn't have access to lawyers that would work for him for free, uh, people that probably already owe his dad favors or him favors anyway. Um Cash, the guaranteed, is sitting there. I'm sure he's got enough. Why does Hunter Biden need to borrow that money? He doesn't. Truth is that this is probably one in a series of very many things that you often find where people of means move around large sums of money and claim them to be loans. Like you ever notice in some of these trials, like that Murdoch thing earlier, where somebody's like, yeah, well, you know, I wasn't that worried about collecting the 50 grand, the 100 grand, because that's the level that he was on, you know, comfortable, above middle class, uh, on the way to being rich, but not quite there. People that have that kind of means, they turn around and they flip 
fifty, hundred thousand dollars around. They'll flip around in a loan or a loan repayment money that might be more than you'll see in a decade of, of solid work or in other cases more than you'll see in a lifetime of actually earning a living, whether it's a decent living or not. They'll move these things around and it becomes a nexus of craziness where you can't quite keep track of it. And even if they catch up to it and say, hey, there was money loaned here and it was never paid back, then retroactively you can create, well, there's supposed to be loan repayments and, well, I'm sure we have a piece of paper somewhere that says this or we have an email exchange. You might create these things ahead of time so that they're time stamped and they can back you up. But this is a contingency plan in order to cover money being moved around. So guaranteed, this actually runs a lot deeper than what we're going to get from CBS. Who is not going to reveal to you what I just explained to you in a general sense? Anyway, back to this. Morris attorney confirmed a repayment schedule on the loans beginning in 2025. (laughs) Noting that separate attorneys negotiated an interest rate of 5%. See, this is where he puts himself outside of the circle. Like, I don't know what the whole thing was, but... I do know that he's going to pay this back with interest. Now, whether that actually ever happens or not, another story. Anyway, an IRS agent involved in the Hunter Biden tax investigation told Congress in December that Morris spent approximately $4.9 million financially supporting the president's son. The reason for the discrepancy was not immediately apparent. So this guy was spending money supporting Hunter Biden, right? He needed that much for how long? Who? I mean, how long can you be supported for $5 million? Uh, Think about it. Anyway, no, don't think about it. CBS News reviewed a transcript of Morris' deposition delivered last week in which he told the House Oversight Committee the loans began in 2020. Within a month of meeting Hunter Biden at a political fundraiser for his father's presidential campaign. Pause again. So after you know somebody for a month, you're kicking over... $5 $5 million over the course of, let's see, 2020. Oh, less than four years? Nice. I need these kind of friends, especially if they're not worried about me getting it back or they're going to give me a 5% alleged rate of repayment, you know, my interest on a loan that I'm probably never going to pay back anyway. You know, I need these kind of friends. Where's my political event? Where's yours? Do you have one? I'd like to go. Anyway, uh, so I gave you the, the CBS review to transcript. However, the letter from Morris attorney lists five loans dated from October 2021 until December 2023. Morris acknowledged to Congress that the president's adult son would not owe him any repayment until after the 2024 elections. Dun, dun, dun. A prominent entertainment lawyer, Morris is a ubiquitous behind-the-scenes presence in the long-running political saga surrounding President Biden's son. In his closed-door testimony, Morris told congressional investigators the loans covered Hunter Biden's back taxes, payments related to his divorce, and paternity suits, as well as rent and car payments. Morris also provided him with flights on his private jet and paid more than $875,000 for Hunter Biden's artwork. Pause again. That's another great way to scam through these things. You can pay somebody for stuff that doesn't have a solid book value, claim that it's worth something much more than it is. You know, that whole thing that Trump got partially in trouble for in New York, you know, claiming that on the one hand, something is super valuable when you're taking a loan against it, but when you're paying taxes on it, you undervalue it. Well, there, there are many assets out there that can be handled this way. In fact, that, that one painting that Trump had of himself that he hung up and was paid for, bought and paid for with charity money and wound up hanging in his office, that whole thing, you can evaluate that piece of artwork. How much is a painting of Donald Trump worth or how much was it worth at that time? Has it gone up in price? And when it comes to subjectively priced things like that, they can be priced all different ways. Is a painting from Hunter Biden worth some money? Yeah, it is. doesn't matter what you think of him. It is. Even his autograph has a value. But some people might say that, you know, and, and I'll tell you, if I had a painting from just about any president other than George W. Bush, because uh, his painting was not very impressive. But if 
you had a painting from a former president, family member of a president, etc. In and of itself, they're a person of interest, and Hunter Biden's been a controversial person. So the value of his artwork might have gone up. Now, is he worth the kind of money, regardless of what he does, whether it's, you know, with oil on canvas or it is with crayons? Fact is, monetary value, you think it's going to come up to this kind of level? Probably not. And giving him near a million dollars, 875000 excuse me, for his artwork might be something else that's being utilized to hide money transacting for other reasons. He may have indeed bought a painting or bought paintings or sculpts or whatever, photographs, doesn't matter. Art is art. But um, does it actually retain that value? Does it have that street value? Is it the kind of thing that ends up at a comic book shop on the wall for 20 bucks? I don't know, but I do know that this is one of the popular methodologies for pulling this kind of crap. So I got stuck on the Hunter Biden issue for a little bit. I'm going to put that link in the Ocelli chat room as well and drop some more that I meant to get to on this show and see if I can get through just a couple more bullet points with my last 10 minutes before we start to do the live show. Where's the money going? Well, there's a whole lot of issues as to where money's going. People keep wanting to talk about Russia and how much money is going to Ukraine, how much money is indeed going to Israel. Is it worth it? Millions of dollars per day to one place, billion dollar chunks to the other. Um, but I also take a look at the rest of the story. Uh, for instance, you know, $70 million and stuff like that in securities and grants and all that good stuff. Um, the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society and how that is now being amped up a bit because trouble in Gaza. Uh, hey, remember the, the, uh, the, the, the Titanic submarine thing with the submersible that went there and, you know, got crushed and all that? Well, there's some news about that. There may be a whistleblower on it trying to talk about, you know, what might have actually really happened there. I don't know if people remember it anymore, but I leave it up to you, and I'm not going to bother to read from the article. We got stuff to do. So let's see. I'll put those links in the chat room at Ocelli.com under Where's the Money Going? And I know we have other stuff to cover as well. So with that, I'm going to uh, take a short, I mean super, super short, audio break here because things are uh, not cooperating with me at this moment. WallStreetWindow.com Gold, silver, the stock market. WallStreetWindow.com Perhaps you're invested deeply. Perhaps you're not in deep enough. Maybe you're thinking about getting started. WallStreetWindow.com Michael Swanson, the brilliant author of The War State, understood these trends professionally for many years, and now he gives you the benefit of his knowledge. WallStreetWindow.com Go there now. Go there now. Go there now. Go the Ocelli.com radio network. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, and you're listening to The Ocelli Effect at Ocelli.com. The War State by Michael Swanson explains the great national transformation that took place and put the Kennedy presidency in the context of the times and reveals never-before-published information about the Cuban Missile Crisis. President Kennedy would not have been assassinated if he had been president 200 years ago. His assassination took place in the context of the Cold War and the rise of the national security state. Before World War II, the United States was a continental republic. In the decade that followed, it became an imperial superpower. Generals such as Curtis LeMay not only wanted to invade Cuba, but knew that there were short-range missiles on the island armed with nuclear warheads that they could not destroy because they were on mobile launchers. Their invasion could have led to a third world war, and they wanted to go to war anyway. The War State by Michael Swanson revealed why and we'll show you what President Kennedy was up against. For more information, thewarstate.com. 
Go ahead, caller. Yeah, I'm interested in the truth about the JFK assassination. Right. Well, what do you want to know? Judy Baker's wild claim. Oswald's girlfriend. She knew Ruby and Barry. Cancer weapons. Really? I imagine I could claim I have four wheels. It doesn't make me a wagon, but okay. Oswald was on the kill team and was trying to prevent the murder of John Kennedy. Come on now. Has a real effort on the JFK assassination built into her claim? Go to Amazon.com. Enter Judith Baker in her own words. You'll get results for a digital copy of a book where Walt Brown utilizes her own words and the known evidence in the case to get at, well, <laughs> a different perspective, let's say. You can get Judith Barry Baker in her own words from the author himself, signed if you request it, by contacting Dr. Brown at K-I-A-S-J-F-K at AOL.com. It's a fun book and it actually dissects the many, many fantastic claims. Judith Barry Baker in her own words. Thank you for all the great information. Mad Prophet of the Airways. I am here every Thursday. Revelation through conversation. The O'Chilly Effect is sponsored by WallStreetWindow.com and listeners like you. And now, and now the, most, the most underrated voice in all, in all media, Chuck O'Chilly. So finishing up the last five minutes of this Friday night one-hour special, which doesn't quite run a full hour, I dropped a bunch of stuff in the Ocelli chat room and might have disrupted BP's video of the week. So he's going to have to drop it back in the chat room at Ocelli.com because uh, I flooded my own chat room for a moment. <laughs> anyway, um bunch of stuff happening there. What was I going to cover? Here it is. Let's just do it with the headlines as best I can. We've already gone over ad nauseum the year of the lawsuit, but I didn't get to the 2024 selection debacle uh, from Courthouse News, right? We got the year of elections, half of Earth's population to decide world's future. There are elections going on all over the planet. That's the headline from there. Uh, I smell a rat, says Dem Governor Pritzker of special counsel report on Biden, as you may or may not know. Not going to charge him in a whole bunch of those classified uh, cases. Might have gone into the year of the lawsuits thing, because I surely think there will be some additional lawsuits to come out of it. But apparently no criminal charges there. Uh, how about Trump and motion for mistrial in E. Jean Carroll case is denied. Interesting that that's happening. We've gone over it on this show. Not sure what to think about it, except, I don't know, I smell a lot of BS there. But does it really matter if it is the useful political instrument to uh, get support among the aggrieved? Maybe not. And that headline came from NBC News. How about the headline from the New York Post.com? Trump getting bought out, in quotes, after pleading for Bud Light to get a second chance over transgender fiasco. Uh, that's a weird headline, is it not? How about this? Special counsel won't charge Biden in classified docs probe, despite evidence he willfully retained materials. Uh, what does he willfully do now? Does he even know where he is? These are my questions all the time, but that was on ABC News. That headline. Okay, how about Trump tries to woo union leaders despite his long record of exploiting workers? That is always funny to watch. And, you know, him also talking about the uh, immigration issue, which we're going to get to in a second, regarding the fact that, uh, you know, hey, look, I don't like illegals working in all these kind of places, but go to a Trump property and note the impossible to discern accents of some of the people that work there. Or at least that's the way it was a decade ago or two or three when I visited them. I have this sneaky, sneaky suspicion, call it a gut feeling, call it, I don't know, my psychic abilities to think that most of those workers there, not born in America for sure. And I bet some of them didn't have their paperwork straight or had none. But these are my suspicions and we can't prove them, right? Anyway, nobody wants to solve the border issue. Texas Republicans demand, then help kill the bipartisan deal on border security. That is in the DallasNews.com. Uh, I will destroy you, Lankford says. Major conservative media figure threatened him before details of his border bill were public. That's according to Mediate and also on the Huff Post. Conservative personality takes credit for threatening to destroy, in quotes, Republican senator. Indeed. 
Hey, how about this? Curtis Sliwa, the guy who ran for mayor, back in the news just for a minute while he was describing to Sean Hannity about, ready, New York vigilantes take down a migrant on live TV. However, he was actually from the U.S. Curtis Sliwa, again, involved in, you know, some sort of shenanigans regarding media and publicity stunts. That's in theguardian.com. Again, all these links in the Ocelli chat room. Immigration surge to bolster U.S. economy by $7 trillion, says Congressional Budget Office. Surge in immigration will boost U.S. economy, Congressional Budget Office says. Now, one of those headlines from BNN Breaking. Okay, breaking news. All right. Uh, breaking news. Yeah. BN Breaking News. Anyways, and the other one. From time, you know, like the old magazine. There you go. Other political pawns and weapons of mass distraction in the neutering world order marches on. After all, a new House bill would finally make squatting a criminal act in Georgia. Similar bills in other places like in Jacksonville, Florida. And I give you the links to those in the show notes and in the Ocelli chat room. D- Trump disqualification case. Uh, has shaken up American civil religion. That according to religiousnews.com. Culture war as per usual uh, waging. And the chroniclemagazine.org. Culture war, whether we like it or not. That's what the headline is there. Rudy Giuliani claims that uh, the Trump campaign owes him $2 million. He's having trouble keeping his legal situations in check and getting lawyers for the lawyer. Okay, bounce checks and Trump's unpaid fees. Rudy Giuliani lays bare his finances in bankruptcy hearing. That is on the independent.com. The other two stories about the previous headline come from Mediate and uh, Radar Online. Chinese scientists build powerful microwave weapon that can fire from a moving truck using Sterling engine to cool technology. That's uh, from SCMP. Dot com. Anyway, DOJ charged an Iranian operative. Wait a minute. I covered this in an earlier show with hiring Hell's Angels bikers for an assassination in the U.S. That's uh, according to the Business Insider, and we covered that with a show with Mar- Carmine Savastano not long ago. The WEF's obsession with AI and brain chipping. We can create an AI system where we don't even need democratic elections, says Klaus Schwab. That's according to uh, something on globalresearch.ca. Trump tries to woo union leaders. Whoops, already covered that one. Uh, and the Murdoch case, all that stuff. I was going to get to the drug war, and I had stuff from the corporate end of the pool and the street level, but guess what? I'm out of time, and we got to get to the Friday night call-in show, so let's get straight to it. And, in fact, I want to remind you guys that we still have open signups at Ocelli.com to be a supporting member and all that good stuff. Get the five years, the well, excuse me, five years. Let me rewind. Get the first decade of the Ocelli archive by becoming a member or a supporter at at least $10 a month or more. And uh, you could sign up for a one-time fee or all that good stuff. Or if you think you're owed based on a past donation, whatever, contact me, info at Ocelli.com, or make a payment to blindjfkresearcher at gmail.com. That is my PayPal address. And I got bills to pay this month and next and heavy ones coming up for the year. But uh, any support would be helpful. And you can get yourself some zip files containing tons of MP3s. You'll have more than 5,000. By the end of the year, if I send you monthly zip folders loaded with not only my show, the many shows I've produced, other audio business, some stuff unreleased to the public, all the Jordan Maxwell shows, as I explained to a recent email person, um, Ocelli and the Greek, bunch of other shows that I participated in or produced over the first decade of the Ocelli effect. So I'm done with this and I am definitely done with the news for the week. So hopefully you are, and you know what, no matter who you are, where you are, when you are, I want you to remember one thing only as I turn it over to the live open mic show here on a Friday night, and my co-host B. Pete is waiting in the wings. Remember this, I am merely Ocelli. All of you are indeed the effect. We are not responsible for any stupidity which might ensue. Thank you.
like history, real history, that you were never taught in schools. Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia. By author Mike Swanson, with new documentation never seen before, that'll open your eyes to events that led up to this. Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia, 1945 through 1961. Get your copy today at Amazon.com. Why? The Vietnam War. By author Mike Swanson. In Denial. Secret Wars with Airstrikes and Tanks. By Larry Hancock. Secret Wars became a staple of U.S. covert operations and are still happening today. Larry Hancock's book, In Denial, rips the cover off many of them. Using new files, it exposes things about the Bay of Pigs that no one has ever written about before. It shows why it really failed and why the United States did not learn from it. It also shows why other countries today are doing secret operations with more success. This is the book that puts what some want to deny into the light. In Denial, Secret Wars with Airstrikes and Tanks. Larry Hancock. For more information, go to Larry-Hancock.com. Pick up your copy of In Denial at Amazon.com in digital or physical form. Uncle, do you remember that time when Benjamin Fulford said that an Asian secret society was going to dispatch ninjas to take down the Illuminati? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and the cartoon. Yeah, did that ever work out too good? No. It didn't, did it? It didn't but here on Ocelli.com Radio Network, things work out a bit better, don't they? Much better. Much I mean, better. it's clear in understanding about the programs. The programs are much clearer. Getting live people into it, they really have a good conversation going. Much better. So much better scene. I say forget Benjamin Fulford and his ninjas and listen to the Ocelli.com Radio Network. I agree. It's straight to the point. Straight talk. And I like that idea. Ocelli.com. Holocaust. You know what uranium is, right? This thing called nuclear weapons and other things, like lots of... You know what uranium is, right? Bad things. Things are done with uranium, including some bad things. Nuclear Holocaust. You know what uranium is, right? I've been briefed. Nuclear Holocaust. Nuclear Holocaust. You know what uranium is, right? This thing called nuclear weapons and other things, like lots of... You know what uranium is, right? Bad things. Things are done with uranium, including some bad things. Nuclear Holocaust. Nuclear Holocaust. Nuclear Holocaust. Nuclear Holocaust. Nuclear Holocaust. Nuclear Holocaust.
going to Chuck O'Chelly. Jelly, you know it's Chuck Jelly. You are about to embark upon the great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped.